Today's gospel lesson is pretty full. Those of you who know the gospels well know Mark does not waste any words. And so when we read a few verses of Mark altogether like today, a lot of stuff happens. Now to put this into context, Jesus is becoming popular. He launched his public ministry and he has been doing a number of things that has drawn a lot of attention. Jesus has begun to call his disciples. Jesus has healed a paralyzed man. He has cleansed a leper from his leprosy and perhaps most distressing or inspiring, depending on how you see it, he cleansed a man of demons. Now, Jesus is becoming popular. And by the time we get to today's story, some people are amazed by Jesus and other people are scared of Jesus. The attention he's getting is not safe for him. His disciples get to be a little concerned, as does his family back in Nazareth. Now remember, he's not living in Nazareth. He's over at the lake house in Capernaum. And so his family hears about what he's doing. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in a big family, like I grew up in a big family, big families tend to know your business. And big families tend to care about your business. And when you do things that might embarrass the family, what happens? the family comes to get you, right? <laughs> Jesus is out there doing this stuff and bringing too much attention to himself. And so in today's lesson, Mary and his siblings have come to Capernaum to collect their crazy brother. And yet, as they show up, they can't get through the crowds. And Jesus' disciples who say like, oh, your mom and your brothers are here. They come to Jesus and they say, hey, they're out there. They're trying to get to you. And then Jesus says something that is pretty harsh. Jesus says, who are my mother and my brothers? And then he looked around at those who sat with him and he said, here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. Now, we might hear that and think he understands his call. In the first century, that is not what anyone would have thought. He disrespected his family. This is a harsh moment. Jesus is doing something completely unexpected because back in the first century, family was everything. Back in the first century, family meant a lot of good things. Family is who you lived with. Oftentimes, multiple generations lived together under one roof to help one another. In addition, families often had businesses. And the family business is what kept the family secure. Everybody worked in the family business. And I bet Jesus was supposed to have worked in the family business too, building stuff with wood. And yet here he is, far away. Family in the first century is how you stayed secure. It was your insurance policy to have children who had children who were strong and able. And in case someone got hurt or sick, the rest of the family were able to support you and keep you safe. A family in the 21st century is a little different. Yes, family still is connected, but how many of us actually live where we grew up? How many of you out there who have adult children all live where they grew up? It is very common for many of us, maybe even most of us, to travel and move and live beyond where we grew up, to not live in the same house as the rest of our family, for the rest of our family to not know all of our business or attend to us in this kind of specific way. I was just back in Florida a week ago where I gathered with all of our family to celebrate one of my kids' birthdays, and it's unique and doesn't happen very often, and it's great. But I don't live where I grew up. Here in the 21st century, family is a bit different. And we have to hold that idea in tension as we read today's gospel lesson to see just how unusual Jesus was being here in this moment. For us, today's story goes beyond family to invite us to consider that we make a choice about how we live our lives. We all make that kind of intentional choice, but it's not just about professional identity. 
It's also about our spiritual identity. Choosing our own path can sometimes be a bit daunting, especially when it's around spirituality and our spiritual identity. Except when we make good choices about who we are spiritually, about how we follow God and God's call, we never actually walk alone. I read a story a couple years ago, back prior to the pandemic, about a young man in a high school in Minnesota. And that young man participated in See You at the Pole. Remember See You at the Pole? I remember doing this in the 90s. I assume we still do this. But apparently they don't really do it in Minnesota because this poor man in this high school showed up to the pole on that morning seeking to pray with others in his school by himself. And he was there at the pole by himself saying prayers when some woman drove by and saw his poor solitary soul right there at the pole saying prayers, snapped a picture, put it on social media. And within a few minutes, there were people who joined him at the pole. And the next day, dozens more came to begin to say prayers each day at this pole because that young man did something by himself that inspired others around him. He made a choice that was not easy, a choice that was not obviously popular, but one that bore witness to the kind of person he wanted to be, to the faith that he had, the courage to actually bear witness to that faith in a world that perhaps wasn't that interested, and in doing so, inspired so many. We have a life that we choose. Every one of us either here or watching at home, makes choices about the life that we live. We are not victims to our choices. God calls us. God calls out to us, pulling us forward, encouraging us to take specific steps. We have choices about whether we take those steps or not. Jesus had a life that was pretty much predetermined for him. A good Jewish boy, a good Jewish man in the first century was supposed to live in a way that he did not. Because for Jesus, he was answering God's call. He was beginning to call others, call others out of that life that the world told them they were supposed to live into a life that was God-centric, into a life that took courage and conviction and was sometimes unpopular. But into that life they went in order to inspire all of us today. As we kick off our summer session here at St. Michael, we are coming out of this pandemic. And it would be easy for us to stick with some of the habits that we created during the pandemic. But already this morning, I heard someone say in the hallway, they stopped and they got dressed, and they came to church because we have classes again at 10 o'clock. Worship, education, service, all of the ways in which we share our lives together when we make specific intentional choices about not doing certain things that the world tells us we should do and instead answering God's call to do the things that take that courage and conviction and effort and commitment that are not convenient but are so good for us. We are at the point where we can start making those kinds of intentional decisions again, to be with one another as intentionally as possible, to not let a year of sitting behind a screen at home change who we really want to be, who God is calling us to be. We may not know just yet the kind of life that God wants for us, because that changes over time. God calls us and changes that call as we go. But one thing is for sure. We can identify, live into the kind of life God calls for us here together and together when we are brave enough to bear witness to that faith in this world, our world will be transformed. How is God calling you into something new now? Do we have the courage to answer? 
My hope is yes, because when you do, you will never walk alone. Amen.